today I am doing some testing for my new jar here, the straight side jar. And I'm going to be testing out these three fragrances. Oh, am I out of focus? Alright, so we have English Garden over here from Candle Science, Egyptian Amber, and Jamaica Me Crazy. So I'm going to test those. I'm not filling it all the way. Oops. <laughs> I'm not filling it all the way because I'm not going to be um, selling. I'm just testing this one. So I'm going to fill it probably... I think I'm going to put about four or three ounces of wax in there and just test how the hot throw is. That's mainly what I'm testing right now, not necessarily how long it takes to burn down. And I'm using these CD12 wicks to test it. I read from a few people that these actually work pretty well, so I'm going to give that a try and I will let you know how that burns. And these are not new fragrances. I use these inside of my candle lines already. I'm just switching over to a different jar, one that's a little bit smaller. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. And I'm doing the double boiler method today as well. I did order a new um, everything actually. I'm going to be doing a um, um, melting pot, um, the large ones that you get. Press it's not a Presto pot, it's a different version of a Presto pot, but it does the same thing. So I'm going to be getting that, and when I do that, I'll do a review on that one. But in the meantime, I'm going to be doing this double boiler method. And this is the new wax I'm going to be using, Nature Wax C6. I believe it's a soy coconut blend. And the wax I was using before was a um, paraffin soy blend. So I wanted to get away from paraffin wax a little bit. I like it, but I wanted to go for something that's better. And I was reading great things about C6, and I've always wanted to try it. And I think I might have tried it once when I was doing my testing um, a while back when I was um, or first starting with candle wax and things like that. I tried a lot of different things. And these are the jars that I'm going to be testing out today. I'm not going to probably use all of them, but I'm going to use these three definitely. And we will see what happens. I'm going to keep you guys in the loop. In case you didn't know, this is what my previous jar looked like. I double wicked this, um, I think this is the 15 ounce apothecary jar. Mark. I fit 12 ounces total of wax and fragrance in here. So that's how much I put in here. But um, So this one will fit about 7 ounces. This is a 9 ounce jar. It's not going to fit 9 ounces. That will be all the way up to the brim. So I will be downsizing. And about the same height. This one's wider, much wider. This is about four inches wide and three and a half inches tall. This is three and a half inches tall and I think two and seven eighths of an inch wide or something like that. So there's differences between the two and this one will be single wicked, not double wicked. So we got our water in here. I don't know if you can see. I'm trying to move it. It's filled up to that gray line. That's usually the spot where I usually fill up my um, pouring pitcher. Not pouring pitcher. My um, the pot for the pouring pitcher. And what we're gonna do now is clean these jars. And so what I'm gonna use to clean these jars is just some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And I gotta get my paper towel. So you just take the top off. I'm trying to do all one hand, guys. Take the top off. You wet the paper towel dampen it with the rubbing alcohol and then you wipe out all the way to the bottom what is happening for um you want to dampen the paper towel with the rubbing alcohol and then you just wipe out any residue this one had the lids on it when i got it so there's not much going on in there but usually if you get your lids at your jars and they do not have a cover on them inside of the box, there will be some debris inside of it. So I just like to clean that out because you do not want to see it um, settle to the bottom of the candle when you're done. And then it just doesn't look professional, I don't think, personally. And it looks like you're not clean. So that's why I do that. Um, I will do that really quickly. And I got my wick stickers right here. Candle Science wick stickers and my wick bars. I'm going to get my wicks into place. Just another quick tip about figuring out fragrance load, I'm going to be using 8% fragrance load inside of this jar. So I'm going to use, as a tester, I'm going to use 
three ounces of wax and 8% fragrance load. So to figure out how much you need in ounces for fragrance, you take how much you're gonna use in wax and you multiply that by the fragrance load, which in this case is 0.08. And that brings you 0.24, which is the fragrance that you're going to use in ounces. So when you're weighing it on the scale, I'll try to show you how I do it while I'm doing it, but I put my, um, I add my fragrance directly into my pouring pitcher while the wax is in there after it's heated up. And I, um, I just make sure that I don't go above 0.24 when I'm doing that. You can also set it aside inside of a small container and then pour it inside of your pouring pitcher um, afterwards if you would like to do that. So it's completely up to you, but I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm also going to be using some dyes today, the honeycomb dye from Candle Science, as well as this uh, sea foam dye block. I love the dye blocks because it gives you a richer color than liquid dye. And I was going to use a avocado green for my Jamaica Me Crazy, however, I ran out and I didn't realize it until just now, so I have to order some more. So that's going to be a plain candle. And then the Egyptian amber is going to be the honeycomb, and the English garden is going to be the sea foam dye. Uh, the dye blue. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so I just cleaned my jars and what I'm going to do now is put the wicks inside. And I like using these wick stickers. Some people use um, glue guns, glue sticks or whatever, but I decide not to because sometimes it leaves a little bit of a stream. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, let me know. Because um, it could be more cost effective to use a hot glue gun instead of using the wick stickers because they add up after a while. You know? So what you want to do, you see the center, you try to get it as centered as possible between the letters and the numbers. And then you eyeball it and you just press it in. Make sure it's secure because you do not want your wick to start floating around while you are um, making candles. That's not cool. So you got that. You just do that for the rest of them. What I like about this jar is that it's a, it's a little bit of a curved bottom, but it's pretty much flat, so you don't have to worry about there being any um, uneven wick sticking at the bottom of it. And my water is boiling over here. I don't know if you can hear that but it is ready and I still got to weigh out my wax and I forgot to get my scale I have to get my scale too all right it's different filming when you're uh, making candles while you're filming I'll be right back so what I do while I'm melting down my wax I have it in this pouring pitcher it's gonna melt down pretty quickly is I keep my thermometer in there. I use this type of thermometer. It's very old-fashioned. Um, I am I have a new one in the mail that's coming. That is the ones that you just, <laughs> I want to call it a scanning, like scanning gun or whatever, but it's not. It's the ones that you use for um, uh, like non-touch, whatever they're called. I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, the other thing that I do, I like to keep my jars on the stove. While I'm doing the double boiler method, since I'm using my kitchen stove, this is how I do it. I do plan on switching over to using my, um, to doing this in my office because I'm going to be getting my pouring pitcher and, um, I don't have the kitchen space to use it inside of my kitchen. But, um, let's see, what temperature right now? We are at... at 150 it's gonna melt down really quick and remember we're doing 0.24 ounces of fragrance to go inside I think we're gonna go with Jamaica Me Crazy first since we're not using any dye in that one and we will see how that one turns out it's gonna be a very tiny candle <laughs> I actually realized I don't need to heat up all of these at one time I don't know it's gonna be I'm just gonna do one and you don't need to get too hot either so Let's see. Uh, it's my first time using this wax. What I'm going to do is usually people heat it up to about 185. That's usually what I have done with my waxes in the past. I don't want it to get above 190, 195. 
Alright, so we're going to take it off the heat now. And I let it sit for a little while. I'm going to put it right here so you can see. It's completely melted. I let it heat up to one, uh, 190 actually. And I'm going to let it sit for a while and cool before I added my fragrance. I remember when I was first making candles, I made the mistake of always um, putting in the fragrance a lot sooner than I needed to. And it would cause it to cool down way too quickly. Put this in at 160. I'm going to treat it the same way I treated my other wax and see if it tolerates the same. We're pouring it at 145. So I'm going to see how that goes. And that's our tester number one. That's only three ounces. I didn't want to waste resources, so I'm just testing a little bit at a time. I'm gonna put it over here and cool down. And to get out the fragrance, what I do is I just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and paper towel, and I just keep wiping it out until it's all gone. If it's a really strong fragrance, like cinnamon or something very strong, you have to just wait, unfortunately, and just give it time. And then eventually the smell will go out and you can just um, go on to the next fragrance. So we're gonna clean this out. Nice and clean. So what we're gonna do now is move on to our next fragrance. And we're gonna do Egyptian Amber with the Honeycomb Candle Dye. It kind of looks like this. I'm gonna show it to you again, just in case. Sorry for getting in front of the camera, but this dye is going to look around that. Probably a lighter shade, because we're not gonna use as much inside of this candle. So I'm gonna just a tester. This is what the dye blocks look like. I took some of off of this one already. But I usually just, I don't weigh how much dye I use, which I think I'm going to start changing both it as well. But I'm going to um, take off a small piece since it's only three ounces, which is around the same size, of, same amount of dye that I would use for my mini candles inside of my little black tins. And I'm going to put that much inside of this candle this time. So. So this is actually how it's cooling, um, which is really interesting. It's like doing a nice top layer as well as a bottom layer. And regular soy wax does it from the outside in. And then my paraffin soy blend wax did it from the bottom up. So it's so interesting how every single wax does, um, it cools very differently from each other. And we'll see if this one has that weird bubbly uh, film thingy that soy wax gets or if it'll just be a smooth top. We will see. I read it's going to be a smooth top, so bets are on that. Alright, next we have English Garden. And with this one, we're going to have a seafoam blue dye. Um, nope, this is not the next one. What did I say I was going to do for you guys? Oh, I think it was this one. Egyptian Amber. Yes. Um, we're going to do that one. That's the honeycomb dye. And how I break these up usually is just with a knife. It is the easiest way to do it. get my dye knife. And always use a glove if you can. I know we're just testing, we're not selling these, but still, good practice. Um, so we're going to cut a little bit of dye, just a little bit, not about that much actually. It's not a lot, I'll show you. Very little. You don't need a lot when you're only using like three ounces. And I'm gonna keep it on this paper towel over here. All right, so we got that. I'm gonna put this nice the sheet on it, put it away so nobody needs a boo boo. And looks like we can add some more water into our. It's so funny. It sounds like it's singing every time they. Every time the water boils, it sounds like, like it's, the bubbles are singing. It reminds me of like when you boil lobster and it sounds like they're crying. That was, I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry, guys, for those lobster lovers out there. Alright, um, so we have that, and we're going to put this back. And we're going to measure out our three ounces of wax. Three ounces of coconut wax.
move that over there. We're gonna move that right there. And I'm gonna push you back for a second. So I can get to this wax and put my glove on. about this wax I thought it would be like filmy but I'm touching it now because I hate the, the way the feeling of the wax smells but it doesn't feel horrible on your skin like at all it's interesting versus like soy wax all right so we got our three ounces right here and we're gonna melt that down and we're gonna if you do have a thermometer like this it's probably like the cheapest thermometer in the world very old-fashioned thermometer the glass ones, you just stick it right in there because it takes a while for it to warm up. And then you just prepare your work area. Look at that candle right there, guys. You see how it's cooled in already? Just a few minutes ago, it was basically liquid, and now it's starting to solidify a lot faster. It's cooled pretty quickly, which is nice. I think it's going to have a smooth top. Alright, so let's do our next candle. And we're going to do this Egyptian amber smell. And this is one that I offer inside of my um, my candle line. I have 20 different fragrances, and so it's kind of hard to remember which audio story everything goes with. Ten of them are audio stories, and then five of them are music candles from the Renegade Collection. So um, these, I'm trying to remember, I think Egyptian Amber is the Lazy Boy, I'm pretty sure, the Lazy Boy audio story, which is a really good story. I like that one. And then I wrote all of them myself, in case anyone's wondering. I write all of my audio stories myself, I record them myself, and um, they're all copywritten and everything's all protected and all that jazz. I always suggest if you're going to be using a new jar, especially if you're going to try out, don't just take my word for the straight side jar and try the CD12s and the coconut wax and all that. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Try what works out for you and go with it that way. Don't um, don't just follow what I'm saying just because it's, not everything works the same for everyone. So just do your own testing like this. I do suggest if you're going to test though that you don't fill it up all the way. Like you do it something like this, like partial so you're not wasting your fragrances in case it isn't a good match or anything like that. stare in the dye really really well you want to make sure that um, it doesn't have any little dots on the bottom when it solidifies and that you can't see any streaks in it while you're staring at it you want to make sure it's like completely in there really good and then the next thing we're gonna do so I added the dye right away give it plenty of time to dissolve and then the next thing I'm gonna do actually I feel like even though I do have these old thermometers, that they are more accurate than the one that you press the button. What is that called, guys? An afraid thermometer? I think that's what it's called. I think it's more. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is add in our fragrance. Like 
I said earlier, um, when you are using small amounts of wax and fragrance, it cools down fairly quickly, so it's hard to get a good stir going. And then I know a lot of people say go for the two minutes, but if you're doing a tester like I am, Got our new lazy boy right here. Looks like a bear. Alright, so let's see. We got one more left to do right now for this video purposes. I'm gonna do the rest off camera. I'm not gonna do that to you guys. We're gonna do English Garden next. English Garden, we're gonna have the sea foam dye blue, and we're gonna use about the same amount, like a slither basically. Get a new glove. We're gonna weigh out or measure out our three ounces of wax to put in this bad boy. So we just weighed out three ounces of wax for our English garden. And 
this is our last test of that one. I'll see, I'm curious of how like it looks while it's um, solidifying with dye in it. Especially the blue one. The blue one's really pink. Let's take a breath. Let's take a breath. Alright, so I put my pink foam blue dye inside of the Staring it vigorously. You don't want to stare it so it's jumping out of the car. It's like that. dye in right away so it has plenty of time to melt. You don't have to wait for it to reach a certain temperature as far as I'm concerned. about the English garden scent is that it smells just like a freshly rained rose garden. It smells so good. I absolutely love the smell. But I, um, when I was selling it at the farmer's market, I knew that the bees were attracted to it when I opened the can, so um, I guess it's a pretty accurate scent then. It does smell like flowers. So this is how it came out. This is um, the Jamaica Me Crazy one. I call it blindfolded. It does have a smooth top. This has been, it's been a couple hours so far and it's nice and even. There's no sinkholes or any tunneling or anything like that. And um, same with this one, the Egyptian Amber. This one came out really well. There's no frosting, as you can see. I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's no frosting in there. The one that did have frosting, though, is this one. Um, and I noticed that it's probably, it might be because of the dye that I put, the color. I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a little bit of frosting. It's also, yeah, just a tad bit of frosting, but it still looks pretty good. I think so. I still think they're worth switching over to coconut wax. So write in the comment section what you think about these new waxes and the outcome of these testing jars.